So I feel like everyone's getting cute clothing ideas and transforming their old clothes into new. So I thought I should jump into the bandwagon and try to upcycle my old clothes to make them on trend again. Because honestly, I have nothing better to do in this quarantine. <laughs> In today's video, we are going to be creative. Lately, I've been spending a lot of time doing nothing. I'm just like everyone else. So for today's video, I decided to put my time into good use by upcycling some of my clothes. But the challenge here is that I will use my hands at doing a whole entire upcycling my clothes without a sewing machine. The reason why I wanted to do this is because I love DIYs, but supplies are very limited now. Like, I do not have a sewing machine and I do not have a fabric glue with me. So I also chose things that I would have done in a regular thrift flip if I have a sewing machine. So it is a more time consuming process but I just want to show you guys that you do not need fancy gadgets or technology to be creative. So today the video has a theme. What I did was I went on to Google Brandy Melville and Princess Paula website and I just kind of browsed around and found some clothes that I wanted to recreate in this video using things that I found in my closet. So that's really the premise of this video. I'm going to be using pictures from Brandy Melville and Princess Paul website as inspiration to upcycle the clothes that I have. So I'm going to do this in order. The first one is going to be the easiest one. And then the second one is going to be a little bit more involved than the other one because it will take more time for the whole process than the other one. So that's pretty much what we're going to do today. So I just hope that these things would turn out cute. So without further ado, let's get started. Okay, so the first piece that we were gonna flip is this long sleeves flannel shirt. And I really like the details, the color of the shirt, and I really like the pockets. However, I thought the style was like outdated and it just looked like kind of very conservative. I went onto the Brandy Melville website but I think it was down as of the moment so I searched Brandy Melville on Google and Pinterest and I scrolled through everything and I found a lot of tops and skirts which are like this great pattern. This is very in style like what Brandy Melville has been creating at the moment. So then I'm just going to crop this up and turn it into a crop short sleeves button down top and it would be just kind of like the overall aesthetic Brandy Melville has. I got really stressed because I didn't know what to do first. I was like, do I want to see him rip the pockets because the Brandon Melville top didn't have any pockets? But I really liked the pockets of the shirt so I decided to just like put it aside first and work on cropping the shirt first. So I started off by getting a crop top that hits perfectly just above my waist and lay it over the shirt I want to crop. So here's a little hack. When you get the area you want to crop, Put a tape on it to draw the line and guide you when cutting the fabric. And also, the tape helps you cut straight across your shirt. Also, make sure to cut below the tape for seam allowance. So after getting it cropped, I removed the tape and unbuttoned the shirt to make it easier for me to make some folds and attach some pins and needles. So what I did is, I double fold the fabric inwards on the hem, and to hold the fold down, I used some pins and needles. And then midway, I decided to cut the tag at the side of the shirt because for some reason it kinda obstructed me in folding the fabric. And then after pinning everything, I just hand stitched along where the pins were to create the hem. Honestly, it would have been much easier and would have just take a shorter amount of time if I just sewed this with a sewing machine or used some fabric glue. But I actually really enjoy doing this hand stitching process because for some reason, I really like doing tedious tasks. Like, I really enjoy doing 
repetitive meaningless actions over and over again during this quarantine because it makes me feel very productive at home than really doing nothing and it feels like I'm really doing something because it really kills so much time. Anyways, so once it was sewn, I head over cutting the sleeves. So I laid a short sleeve top over the shirt to kind of mimic the length so that I do not have to eyeball it or take measurements of my body. And then I put three tapes on it to leave an extra room because I don't want the sleeves to be too short. And then I just cut it and double fold, attach some pins, and hand stitch along where the pins were to create a hem. And after that, I just repeat the same steps on the other sleeves. So here is what the final result looks like. Honestly, it really looks something like what Brandy Melville has been creating. I actually really really like the top. The way I've been wearing it is leaving all the buttons open. Then just wear a crap white pink top with white pants. But I also can wear it as it is if I want a more conservative look. And that's kind of what I've been seeing on Brandy Melville website. And I also love the fact that I could wear it now much more often because short sleeve tops are more appropriate for the Philippine weather. So the next thing we will upcycle is this striped shirt. And as you can see, it's pretty loose on my body but we're gonna spice it up. As for the materials, you will need the following. You will be needing a shirt, a pair of scissors, some pins to help pin things along, needle, and thread that matches the shirt. So you will be taking your shirt and first you want to decide how long you want your shirt to be. So I grab the tap that hits just above my waist and then I put two tapes below it to mark where I wanted the shirt to end. I'm cutting around 3 inches only because this will be a rouge top and I do not want it to go too short. So the next thing we do is, we're just going to cut it. I just cut straight across the tape in order to have a seam allowance. Then I just initially move the tape at the center of the shirt in order to guide me in placing the channels later. And then I double fold the bottom of the shirt and attach some pins to hold the folds. And after pinning everything, I do a straight stitch just where the pins were to create a hem. And then I flip the shirt and take the excess fabric and measure it from the neckline to the bottom of the shirt and then mark off what amount of fabric I needed and then I just cut it off. Just make sure to leave a little bit of seam allowance as you will be hemming the top and bottom edge of this fabric to tuck it in slightly shorter than the shirt. So I fold over the top and bottom edge and then hand sewn a straight stitch across the folds. Next, I laid the fabric down on my shirt and I'm carefully pinning it down the center so I know that it is placed properly in the center. And then next, I will be sewing down 3 straight stitches to create the channels for the straps. So I'm starting off with the center one to make sure that the overall channels will be properly placed. And you will want to repeat this exact same thing with the side stitches, one on the left and one Make sure to be careful not to suit on the other side of the shirt because if you do, you have to definitely go back and take those stitches out. So it is best to be careful and to go slow. So now you have these channels. Now you want to definitely make sure that your channels are big enough to fit your strap through. 
So moving on to the straps, I initially think this part is super easy but I promise we are almost done. So I take the excess fabric and then you're gonna decide how wide you want your straps to be. Since the channels I made are quite small, I decided to go 14 straps. And to make my life easy, I'm gonna put a tape on it and cut along the tape to have a perfectly rectangle piece of fabric. And then obviously to create a very long strap, I hand stitch the fabric pieces with right sides together. And then you're gonna fold up your straps lengthwise. I mean that's pretty obvious though, like no one's gonna fold it up the other way. And then I'm just gonna hand sew the edges together by going straight down the edge. Since it's inside out right now, you're gonna flip it right side out. So basically, up now. I tried flipping it inside out, and this turned out to be a very bad idea because I realized that the straps are very, very thin, and there's no way I could flip it because, as you can see, I literally can't push the safety pin in for the life of me. And plus, even if I did, then it would have taken me like a thousand hours. So I decided to scrap that idea. So then, I decided to seam rip the stitches I made. And then, I just make an invisible stitch at the edges with the wrong sides touching together so I do not need to flip it inside out anymore. And then, after hand sewing invisible stitches, you will need a safety pin and you'll just want to attach it to the end of your strap and this will help you fit it through the channels on your shirt so you just push the safety pin in and just repeat the same steps to fit the strap through the other side so after you do that you want to match up both ends and make sure it's even. One, two, three, four. So here is the final result of the DIY cinch top. Cinch tops are very on trend right now. And I've seen that fast fashion brands like Princess Polly have been really creating this lately. I actually really, really like the top now. Honestly, I did not usually wear this top before. Like, I probably only wear it twice. And those were the days that I'm just really lazy to dress up, so I just grab it. But I think it looks cute now, so I'll probably wear this more often. And I also love the fact that you could just adjust the cinch top if you want. Like, if you are feeling conservative, you can pull it down. Or if you are feeling scandalous, you can push it up. So that's it for today's video. I really hope that you enjoyed it. And thank you guys for watching. Don't forget to subscribe to this channel and turn on the notification bell. I will see you guys next time.